one, welcome today once again. Uh, 22nd of May today. I'm still Yoshi Levo streaming 20 miles out of Liberland. You are my guest today on Honkler Hangout for the fifth time, I think. And today I have some news for you. Uh, we spoke already so many times before, and um, which went great in my opinion. Uh, but I want to take this stream to the next level. And I've been talking with very interesting people that, uh, for example, help me with the tip bot and uh, stuff like that. And I am planning a 24 hour stream. On the 1st of June, which is not upcoming Monday, but one week later. And I would like to invite you on this Monday. And uh, on that Monday, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Liberland. There is a Liberland Opportunity Zone, which I believe has to be realized one day. Because we are in need for a safe haven for people all over the world that want to live in a little bit less dense populated area for example because of covid and because they want to help establish Liberland and for that reason for that purpose I'm going to stream 24 hours straight on the 1st of June and I'm expecting many guests already uh, and I would like to also invite you there one day and then you know, we will see what happens at that day and how it will continue from there. But uh, I wanted to basically skip next week and put it on a Monday, if that's possible. I know that we didn't talk about it yet. You don't have to tell me yes or no today. But it's it's an, a new ID that basically got born in the last uh, couple of days. Let's call it like that. That is the first thing, Twan. First thing I have to tell you. Now I have another thing to tell you. Did you already get all the information inside of you about my first uh, proposal about the 1st of June? Um, well, um, could you specify what where I come in, 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 in as part of your proposal? You would be one of my guests. One of my okay. guests that day. And I am thinking about uh, uh, if you are up for it, then I have a couple of guests that I believe are interesting for you to sit with, basically, and be, be my sidekick maybe on that day. You don't have to be there for 24 hours, of course. But there are a couple of people that I really think uh, you fit with, let's call it like that. And I would like just to... Uh, introduce you to them that maybe you already know them i uh, we can talk about all that in our private chat in a way uh, but on the first of june i would really it would really help me a lot or let's just say that you are part of this show more than any other guest i had before because it's already your fifth time here so i would like you to be part of the 24 hour stream as well and and on that day the goal is to get a total of well I'm still uh, let's say um, I need to uh, get all the legislative work done with the local governments here to get to the next stage of the Liberland Opportunity Zone and for that step I need a total of five thousand dollars and I'm going to try to break the tip bot that I have on my stream you can tip me with Bitcoin cash and 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 honk tokens and I'm going to try and get a total of $5,000 in tip that day. So that I can pay. We are already paying and working with various uh, organizations. For example, the University of Novi Sad is one of them. They are currently working on an environmental impact study. So we know what kind of a... Uh, impact our project will have and this is one of the requirements that the government uh, puts on us to be able to, to start building there ever um, as we all know the current 
COVID-1984 times, as I like to call them, as I like to refer to them, have delayed the project a little bit. Uh, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. It doesn't have to be bad. Um, we are still exactly on time, in a way. If I can get a total of $5,000 in the project, then um, it will run smoothly into the next phase, which is going to be presenting the uh, project to investors. But before I can do that, I need to do one less step, which is basically budgeting the entire project and making sure that uh, the legislation is done and that we can actually receive money to build something and that we can guarantee that we can build it. So for that purpose, I need a total of $5,000 and I am planning a 24 hour live stream, which is kind of a, a baptize of ev every live stream that exists. Uh, because, you know, 24 hours is a long time. So if you are sitting in front of the camera 24 hours, more things will happen than when I just show you three hours of my life, which is the average time that I am live right now. So every kind of stream that wants to receive some kind of a breakout and get more followers in and, uh, you know, it's also, it has to do with time zones because right now it's night time in the United States and people that would like to watch my stream now that live in the United States are sleeping. So they still have the opportunity to watch the highlight video that I make out of all these interviews that I do. But to also connect with those people, I need to be online in my night time, basically. So I am uh, setting up a live stream 24 hours on the 1st of June and I'm inviting many people to be my guest. I can tell you that the people that I've invited so far are, for example, Jeff Berwick, for example, Roger Ver, for example, Adam Kokesh. Uh, I am inviting you now to be part of it. I am inviting a lot of crypto entrepreneurs, a lot of developers of crypto coins. I don't need to fill 24 hours with just interviews, but I do need to make sure that I don't fall asleep so I need to have kind of a planning that day to keep myself awake as well, right? Actually, uh, in New York, it's uh, it's uh, it's 11 in the morning now, or 11.15. In Chicago, it is 10.15 in the morning. Um, and in the mountain time zone, it's uh, it's 9.15 in the morning. I, I know, I know, I know. No, it's not. It's not that we are uh, doing this interview now at the wrong time, but it's just more that I would like to be online for 24 hours straight to give uh -huh. uh, and and the people that come on the show, uh, I I tell all of them to make sure to you know talk to their peers so that uh, I I have for example one of the goals I set myself is that we get a thousand followers to this stream so i need to do something special to ever get there and and um, there are some announcements of developers that happen around the first of june and they told me hey let's go live on the first of june and make something special and then i said well i think i should stream 24 hours in a row so i'm going to make a special show on the tw on the first of june and i would like you to be part of it a as well so that's basically uh, my question to you today is, would you like to be a guest on the 1st of June? Well, let me check my calendar and get back to you. I'll, um, I'll do course, my best. Of course. No, no, you don't have to say yes or no. Another mm -hmm. thing that I would like to mention to you, Tuan, something that happened this week, is that I've been working against your advice. Let me make that very clear because you... You give me advice on, on, on uh, for example, how to be a perpetual traveler and uh, how to uh, avoid government rulings, let's call it like that, uh, which I did not really take from you, let's also be clear, because I am living in Serbia now, longer than I should, according to you. Uh, I am a temporary citizen and in two weeks time my visa expires so in the last two weeks 
basically let's say uh, three weeks a little bit more than that two three weeks i have been in contact with so many government officials one you cannot imagine and somebody needed some paper from that office and then when i got there they needed a paper from the office that i just been to and and they have been sending me back and forward but after three weeks i can tell you that today this morning i have completed all my paperwork to the agent that takes care of my visa and i am on my way to getting a new uh, serbian temporary citizenship next week on friday residence Re yes yeah, sorry 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 uh, temporary residency you're right it's not a citizenship okay. it's a residence and uh, i'm very excited about it i next week i will most likely celebrate and i'm not in any state to sit here behind the computer um and that is something else that uh, i wanted you to know so uh, some small how to say it correct uh, celebration for me i'm very happy that they still accept me here in this village i don't think the agent that I spoke with today has seen this show yet, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, no, it's it's uh, it's um, uh, you know I'm t I'm for it because I'm telling on the show that I am uh, Yoshi Livo from Liberland and 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 they know that something is going on, but they don't know exactly what 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 I'm doing or trying to do. And Congratulations! Yeah, I'm I'm personally. I feel happy with it because it will give me a lot of peace being here. I don't know if you have ever seen one of the YouTube videos I sometimes make when I walk around and I have things in my mind that I would like to share. But this is such a peaceful town with a, a, f a farmer's market happening basically every day. And people have experienced hyperinflation in the 90s. This is a town that got deeply hit by the... Uh, breakup of Yugoslavia NATO has bombed it to pieces let's call it like that you can still see uh, this war is over now for more than 20 years but you still see uh, marks of it in today's life in this town and uh, because of that war basically uh, people live a different kind of lifestyle than people in the Netherlands or people in uh, the United States, for example. And I'm very glad that I have been welcomed so much by this town and that they have been so warm and open to show me their lifestyle. And I'm with all the COVID-1984, as I like to call it, happening in the world today, uh, you cannot imagine how glad I am to be on this location and, and to know that whenever the global currency reset, which I believe is happening, is going to really kick off. And I believe that somewhere in October of this year that we really start to feel uh, the consequence of all the draconian measures that governments put on us today. And I believe that there is much more to it than just COVID because the economy is quite broken since quite some time now. For example, Deutsche Bank, I don't know how much you know about that specific subject, but the, the bank is basically bankrupt since 10 years. And just because nobody is asking for its money back today, we still live in that dream that our euro has a specific value. Let's call it like that. And, and, and the amount of currency that is currently produced by central banks is astonishing. It's basically the same amount of currency in the last three months as in the first 2020 years of our civilization. And I, I, I call that the global currency reset that is going to happen. And, and, and because I believe in that global currency reset, I have been making these decisions in my life for example trust a bitcoin and not care about building a pension because i don't really believe that it's gonna pay me anything and if it pays me anything then what will the value of that be if i am 80 years old right so um, i i have this future of the world in my mind a little bit and 
uh, if I look at COVID today, I can see a global currency reset happening because of that. And, and, and the governments today try to mask this global currency reset with something they like to call Corona. But for me, it's a global currency reset. And we have, we have been talking about your past. I would like to ask you, how do you see the future, Twan? What, what do you think is going to happen in the next five years? Is this Corona going to really be just that, a virus? And, and is, it, is it just a illness that we have to get to use to live with? Or is something more happening? Because personally, let me just make it cl extra clear once more, I believe the world is going towards a global currency reset. The, the, the dollar that is the uh, reserve currency of the world today, that era is going to end. I believe a special drawing rights of the World Bank is going to eventually take over that position. But that is just my tinfoil hat or my clown's wig speaking. And uh, yeah, okay. I'm interested to hear from you how you see that. Yeah, well, um, I see government as um, a big ball, a big metal ball that's chained to our ankles. Yes. And uh, without it, we will be able to run. Mm -hmm. And because of it, we are forced to stumble. So we do get ahead. We do make progress. Yes. Uh, in, in most countries, in most, uh, uh, in most uh, times, there is progress. There is economic growth. There is technological progress. There is progress in science. Uh, so typically there is progress. But what you see is that um, in countries that have big governments, that have a, a, bit, a large burden of, of taxes and regulations, the progress is very slow. And in countries that have small governments with a low level of taxation and a low uh, burden of, uh, of regulation, progress is much faster. Economic growth is much faster. And there are hiccups. Uh, if you look at, uh, let's say, the past um, 70 years, um, what, what you see in general is that uh, people's lives get better. There is progress. There is growth. There are new inventions. There are... Um, uh, uh, people be, live longer. So in general, there is progress, and in general, there is growth. But sometimes there are hiccups. Sometimes there's an economic crisis or a recession, and a lot, a lot of people are, are fired and are unemployed, and uh, uh, a lot of businesses go bankrupt. But this is usually temporary, and after a while, it 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 uh, it, uh, it it picks back up. And this, of course, is the theory of the Austrian business cycle that. Uh, our monetary system um, causes this, uh, this business cycle. But I do believe that, that in the long run, the cycle is going forward. So typically, the booms are somewhat higher than the busts. Yeah. So the, the next boom is higher than the previous boom, and the next bust is higher than the previous bust. So in, in general, we're moving, uh, not in a straight line, but in general, we're moving, um, moving up in the, in the right direction. And we could do this a lot quicker without uh, without that uh, big ball, metal ball called government chained to our ankles. But uh, just because it's there doesn't mean there's no more progress. There is. And um, I think it is a mistake uh, for libertarians to predict uh, to predict a huge a disaster, to predict uh, a a a uh, a bust that will be so so terrible that we're thrown back to uh, an extreme low level of poverty. Um, I think that's uh, unlikely to happen. Uh, there are exceptions, of course. There are countries where it does happen, like Venezuela, like Zimbabwe. There are always a couple of hell holes where these things do happen, but not for uh, not for the average citizen of the world, not for the average. Um, no, but let me then... We're, we're getting ahead. Things are getting better on average. And the real problem with government is not that it's going to, go, cause, us to, to, going to cause a disaster 
will be ruined, will be extremely poor. Um, I don't think that's the problem with government. I think the problem with government is it, it's holding us back. It's holding us down. It's, 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 it's causing people who could run to stumble forward. And that is a tragedy in itself, a tragedy in itself. And it's bad enough for me to be very motivated to fight government. Um, and I think the problem that uh, uh, we have as libertarians when we predict doom and gloom, we predict that uh, uh, there will be a disaster, a, a catastrophe, uh, and we'll be extremely poor, and there'll be chaos. The problem, of course, is that it's, it, it rarely happens. It only happens in some places like Venezuela, like Zimbabwe, but it doesn't happen in general. And the longer it takes before the disaster to happen, the less credibility we have among our opponents. I get that. Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, if it were true, if I really believed that the whole world is going to be in a disaster, uh, going to turn to a disaster, then I would predict it because I believe in predicting what I really believe to, to, to happen. But I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think the reason so many libertarians predict a disaster is because they... Our uh, hope that it will make it easier to convince people to become critical of government and to become well, uh, at the freedom. Let me but tell I, you that the, the change, the change of reserve currency doesn't have to be a disaster. It can be an opportunity as well. I'm just saying that there is a global currency reset going to happen in my lifetime. And, and that means for me that the reserve currency of the world, which is currently the dollar, is going to change from the United States running their currency to what yeah. I see as the special drawing rights of the, SD, uh, the SDRs of the World Bank. Well, obviously, it may very well happen in, in the long run that the dollar is going to use, lose its uh, its prominent position. That may very well happen, and and I think it will be uh, it will cause problems in America because, uh, of course, what's happening right now. Is that the, the 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 Federal Reserve is is printing a lot of dollars and creating a lot of electronic dollars yeah. that um, are held by foreigners who don't who don't use it to buy goods or services in the United States. So what happens now and has been happening for many decades now okay. is that America uh, buys goods in other countries, pays with it, pays for it with dollars. But the foreigners just hold on to the dollars and don't buy anything in return. And, and this huge uh, amount of holding, these huge dollar holdings by foreigners, uh, in a way, are a gift to, uh, to Americans because they're getting something for nothing, basically. They're, they're, they're well, getting... They do buy a lot of bonds. They buy bonds of the United they're States. Goods and they're paying for it with worthless pieces of paper. That, of course, is an advantage that the Americans have. And when uh, they lose that advantage, uh, they'll turn out to be a lot poorer than they currently seem to be. Uh, when those, um, so so yes, I think for Americans that will be a, a bit of a, a problem. It will cause them to uh, lose a certain amount of their wealth, and it will cause them to have a lower standard of living, at least for a while. Even there, I don't think it's going to be. Um, uh, I don't think it's going to be another Venezuela or Zimbabwe. I don't think it's going to be that quite that bad. Uh, of course, uh, these countries were already poor to begin with, whereas the United States is very wealthy. Um, so, yes, I do believe there will be problems. There will be hiccups. There will be crises. There will be recessions. Uh, I don't think there's going to be the world is going to suffer a crisis like Venezuela suffering or that. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, but uh, let me be clear that that's not that's not uh, something I, that I would like to have people to have people think about, uh, but I, I do see the inequality that gets created with the current monetary policies in, in the world, and, and, and especially the fact that, that the United States has such a huge advantage being the world reserve currency and being able to keep on spending without ever having to, well, if they have to pay it back, they just print some more, right? So. Yeah, uh, the, China That's is part of the special drawing rights since 2015, I believe, not too long ago. And in, in, in my way of thinking, this COVID happening today is a build up 
to a global currency reset and and that's not a doom scenario personally i see a lot of advantages to that because well yeah i i just i would like it to uh, 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 well i i don't think it's fair that the united states has this power let's call it like that i've seen it uh, like i told you uh, the place where I live today still suffers from that power today, in a way. Mm-hmm. And, and and there is, I can call, uh, do you have a minute, I can co- talk about Iraq, about Afghanistan, about Libya, just in my lifetime, in the last 10 years. Or, okay, sorry, 20, 20 years. But, um, personally, I have the feeling as if uh, the, the battle of ISIS against Assad has been lost. And that this is a, a bit of a, 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 a shift in power, and that uh, you know, for example, at the beginning of this year, the United States bombed the Iranian minister of uh, uh, defense, uh, Soleimani, who was, you know, you can. I'm, I'm not going too deep into his character, but he did a lot of things. Let's just say it like that. And they bombed him in Iraq. And I have the feeling as if it was a provocation to start a war with Iran. And as if they couldn't get away with another war in Iran. And that the people just said, we are not going to fight this war in Iran. You pick another way how to solve your debt problem this time. And, and that we are now stuck with COVID. That's, that's, yeah, I don't know. That's my tinfoil honkler wig that I then put on. <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, I don't know. This this global currency reset, in my opinion, is going to bring more balance to the world, which is not a bad thing. It's it's not. Uh, I just don't see how, uh, for example, agriculture in the Netherlands. Let's uh, let's go everywhere today, Twan. <laughs> I, I should say I'm I'm not big on predictions. Um, I don't. Um... Um, I don't consider myself an, uh, enough of an expert to predict the future path of, of the world. Uh, but I, what I do see is that um, uh, that there are there are uh, uh, a lot of countries that have a large burden of government and have very slow growth, like one or two percent growth or, or less. And then there are a few countries that typically are small that um, uh, that have growth rates are a lot higher, uh, often double digits. Uh, if you look at the countries like Hong Kong and Singapore and, uh, and Dubai, if you study these countries and, and study their economic growth rate of the last uh, 50 years or so, it is, it is a, a, an extremely high level of growth that they've achieved. And the reason is that they have a very low burden of government, a very low burden of taxation and regulation. Uh, that's, that's the main reason why they've grown so fast. And, and, and we could have the same. We could have a high le- level of growth as well. Uh, the reason we don't is because of the burden of government. We have this big metal ball hanging on our ankles, uh, chained to our ankles. Um, Countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, and Dubai, all three of them were, were extremely poor in 1960. And now they're not just, uh, they haven't just caught up with us. They've actually... Uh, overtaken. Uh, yeah, they've overtaken us. They are a lot wealthier than we are now. Uh, take Singapore. It has a GDP per capita um, uh, of 80,000 US dollars. And that's, uh, and that's uh, taking into account uh, the... Um, um, the purchasing power uh, of, of these different countries. Uh, so, um, and, and, that, and, and that, to me, that is a tragedy because uh, economic growth is what makes all these other things possible, which makes the growth of technology and science. And, and So let me, let me tell you, uh, let me ask you a different question then. How have you, uh, 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 are you aware that the oil price of uh, the May contracts uh, ended negative and that we had a, I don't know the exact number, but somewhere like minus $33 per barrel of oil in April? And, and how do you take that number? If, let me first ask you, are you aware that the oil price went negative for the first time in the existence of the world 
less than one month ago. No. No? So no. let me t let me tell you a little bit about that. If you want to hear about it. You want to hear about that? Well, um, uh, it's 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 not my area of expertise, but feel free to uh, uh, to mention to uh, talk. You know, I I always, I'm a I'm a numbers guy because I say that numbers are absolute. You cannot lie about numbers. You can lie about numbers because you can count any COVID deaths that you want. Uh, so uh, sorry for making it uh, sound ridiculous now, but uh, in a way, the price of something on that moment is what's real. That is what somebody two people agree on in that specific time and you cannot deny that and that's why for example I like Bitcoin so much because people like to think that Bitcoin is just a joke and it started at zero and now we have it at uh, I can tell you that at this very second it is $9,185 per Bitcoin and that is now and you can deny that but it's the reality of today so Mm -hmm. I am. I like numbers for that reason. And uh, what happened with oil was unique, has never been seen before. And um, because of COVID-1984, um, nobody is driving his car. No airplanes are taking off. And uh, there is a monthly... Uh, futures contract of oil where you can buy 1000 barrels of oil at the spot price on the market and every month it expires and th the barrels has, have to be bought and sold and you have you, you are stuck with those barrels and what happened is because nobody is using oil at the moment the price to store oil skyrocketed uh, it, it, it went up a thousand percent so that is ten times more than usual and to store uh, I don't know exactly how much but let's just say the usual price to store oil is 20,000 and now it was a quarter million dollars because of that event the contracts of oil of May that expired were sold at a negative price so that means if you take those barrels of oil, you will get money on top of it because nobody could store it at that moment. Uh -huh. So whenever that happens, uh, people that are gambling, let's call it speculation to make it a little sound a little bit sweeter, that are speculating on, on, uh, on the price of oil were surprised because they thought that the minimum price would be zero. But then it actually went into negative territory. And, and this has caused a significant amount of losses for anybody being long on oil. I hope you get that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this happened. You can, you can look back last month for the first time in our the history of the world. Let's just call it like that. It has never been happened before. And, and what to make out of such an event? Because... Uh, a lot of people got liquidated that day. I'm very sure. They never. They, they, if you are trading with leverage and then the price goes from 19 to minus 33 on one day, I mean that will. You have to put so much margin in your account that almost nobody is capable of doing that, and and you get liquidated. So. Um, yeah, how to say it? The, the 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 way how to predict economic models is changing. For example, also with negative interest. I mean, Twan, what does negative interest mean exactly? It means that you are getting money on top of your of the amount that you borrow because apparently you are so trustworthy that 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 they are going to give it to you for free and pay you for it. So th 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 this is the reality of today. This is, you know, I, I, I mean, uh, how do you take all these strange events? Because they don't make any sense. You, you got paid per barrel of oil $33. So, <laughs> I mean, this is oil. It's like, uh, you know, it, it, we are using that on a daily basis in our life. I, our life without oil 
is unthinkable in a way and and it's not as much fun in in a way right and 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 uh, we cannot live without it so how can a price of oil go negative only because of this covid that they are bringing us is that justified not really because after a month or three months we we more and more people are starting to see glitches in the matrix am i allowed to say it like that things that just don't make sense uh, they close down a perfectly health uh, a hygienic toilet and then in front of it they they put a po uh, uh, what is the right word of that in english some some some, some porter potty or whatever without uh, being able to wash your hands and that's the solution because it's not safe to go to the toilet anymore at the place where you can wash your hands properly <laughs> so so it's hap that, that that kind of stuff it's so contradictory contradictory what's happening and i just yeah what do you make out of these times that i that, that's something i would like to hear hmm. well um as for negative interest rates uh that's something that uh, i think is only uh only likely to happen when you have central banks who have uh, been given power by the government to, to centrally dictate uh, interest rates, who have been given the power by government to, um, to be the, 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 the monopolist, yeah. they have a monopoly on, on printing money and uh, uh, on... Uh, cheers, Twan, cheers. I'm, uh, oh. yeah. Let me cheers. Now, now I'm going to enjoy it. Take your time, all that you want. <laughs> yeah. So if, if you had a free market, if the government did not interfere in interest rates, um, I don't think there would be such a thing as a negative interest rate. It doesn't make sense, obviously, um, because people always prefer to have money now over having money in the future. Uh, that is why if you borrow money, you must pay interest uh, to the people who are willing to lend it to you. Uh, that, that makes sense. And in a, uh, in a free market, uh, it is the um, the time preference of, um, of the uh, lenders and the borrowers that will determine how high the interest rate is. If if uh, a lot of people decide that they want to uh, save more money, that they want to that they're willing to postpone um, consumption, uh, when that happens. Then the supply of, uh, of of savings goes up, and the interest will go down. It's a matter of supply and demand. If, uh, if a lot of people are willing to postpone consumption, that means there's a lot of money that's available um, as as credit. So uh, the savers will, will get lower interest rates, and the borrowers must must pay lower interest rates to clear to clear the market. And the same thing goes on in reverse when people are do not want to postpone consumption to the same extent, if people would prefer to spend more money now and less money later, and the, then the, uh, the opposite happens and, and interest rates um, uh, will, uh, will go up. And that's, that's normally how the level of interest is determined in a, in a free market. And when the government interferes, uh, then the whole thing is, uh, is, is uh, distorted. Um, you could compare it to what happens when the government dictates prices uh, for, um, let's say, housing, when they um, have maximum um, set maximum uh, rents for housing through through rent controls, when they um, have minimum prices for milk and butter and other agricultural products, wine. It uh, all happened in the location where I am today. They have yeah. experience in my lifetime. I mean, I mean, it happened also in the Netherlands, but way before I was born. Uh, so when the government sets a uh, sets a, uh, a price, an artificial price that is higher than the market price, then what will happen is people consume less and produce more. Let's let's take butter. When they set a minimum price for butter, mm -hmm. what happens is that consumers will consume less butter and probably more margarine. But the farmers will actually produce more butter because the price went up. So you get a surplus in butter. And the same thing is true for, has been true for milk. 
and for uh, uh, for wine, and every every surplus you've ever come across is it's the same uh, the same story. The same is true for um, um, for employment, for wages. When the government sets minimum wages, or when the government uh, uh, enforces collective bargaining, uh, which means that they uh, will allow recognized unions to negotiate with recognized uh, employer organizations. And then the results, the outcomes of these negotiations then enforced for all companies and all employees in the whole field, in the whole country, even though they had no part in negotiation. What typically happens is that um, through this process, wages are artificially higher than they otherwise would be. And that creates unemployment. Um, and then once this is done, once these artificial high wages are set, of course, um, other factors will also contribute to unemployment, like uh, the fact that you cannot fire someone without paying a fine or that you have to pay them for another two years when they call in sick or stuff like that. Uh, that all adds to the problem of, uh, of unemployment. Uh, if, if there was no minimum wage and there was no collective bargaining, that's being enforced by the government, then all these uh, measures would just make uh, wages lower than they otherwise would be. Uh, but if the government tries to artificially prop up the wages, the result is, is more unemployment. So whenever you see any type of surplus or, 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 uh, or a shortage, it's the government that's caused it. The same is true for uh, the roads where we have traffic jams, for uh, healthcare where we have waiting lines, uh, anytime the government messes up the price system, we have short, we have problems like shortages and like um, uh, surpluses. And the same is true for interest. When the government uh, manipulates the interest rate by having an artificially low interest rate, uh, the result will be that uh, people are discouraged from saving and therefore are uh, incentivized to spend their money rather than save it. And the borrowers are uh, incentivized to borrow even more because the interest is so low. And when that happens, a lot of uh, uh, companies will borrow more capital than they otherwise would and, and, and use it to make investments that they otherwise would not have made. And these, of course, are uh, uh, malinvestments usually because they're the type of investments that... Uh, uh, would not occur in a free market where the government did not interfere. And when these malinvestments turn out to be malinvestments, uh, that's when we have a recession, when these malinvestments must all be liquidated and all these uh, companies must go bankrupt and all these employees that work for these bankrupt companies must be fired. So, so that's when we have a recession. Let, let, so that's, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, not a market uh, uh, phenomenon. It's not caused by... The free market is caused by government interference. And the same thing is true for, for negative interest rates. Only when governments manipulate interest rates is it possible for them to go negative. Uh, because um, uh, no sane private uh, lender will be willing to lend. Yeah, but, but here, it, here we go. Now, the, the, it's the, only central the, banks that, are, that, are, that uh, are controlled by the government that are willing to lend money <clears throat> In exchange for a negative interest uh, rate. Uh, in, in today's time, it will cost you. It will cost banks, not you, because uh, well, not really yet. Although your interest rate will be lower than the inflation, but uh, that's a different topic. But it will cost the big banks money to store their wealth at the central bank. They yeah. have to pay. So in that way, a negative interest rate can be explained because at least. Uh, well, they don't have to pay the central bank, and they spread their risk a little bit, and they put it with it with the government, and and they are willing to pay. Let's say it will cost you something at the central bank. Whenever it costs you less at the government, you will put it at the government because it costs you less, and then you are getting a negative interest rate. That's true, but at least you don't have to pay the fee to the central bank. Um, well, but, but in the free market, there would be no central banks. That's true, of course, but we yeah. don't have one. 
we don't have one and that is uh, in in a way the the, the global currency reset uh, what i mean with that is mostly that the price of gold and silver silver is completely not used as money today i always show my coin here i don't know i will show it to you here on the cam i will show it to the viewers uh nobody uses that as money today we are all using the credit card i don't i cannot show you any plastic because i am out of any banking system since four years although my company in serbia now does have a bank because i'm required to have one for my serbian visa that's a different uh, topic um, are you aware Twan, that this week uh, I have to search the article to, to announce, to, to tell you it without any mistake. Uh, Germany, let's just say SUS ECB. Let's see what I find on that. Um, the German court in Karlsruhe last Tuesday, this is now, let's say two weeks ago, 13th of May. Uh, Uh, let me click one. Uh, here is the Financial Times. Let's click that one. Financial Times. I hope I don't get a paywall now, Twan, because I, <laughs> then I can still not, not read about it. But there is the, the... Are you aware that Germany sued the ECB? Let's call it like that. Because they believe that the, the way how the ECB is spreading its money is against the law. This happened uh, less than two weeks ago. Oh. No, I'm now looking into an old article of last year. This is not what I want to see. But there is a there is a there is a lawsuit happening currently from Germany to the ECB about the way how the ECB is buying up bonds. All kind of bonds, not just government bonds, which the ECB is allowed to do. But also bonds of all kinds of businesses and, and uh, all kinds. Yeah, it's, it's been going on since, since many years. And now it seems like uh, Germany had enough of it. Let's just call it like that. Have you heard already of that court case? Yes, I have. Uh, what, what, uh, could you uh, shine your light on that? Do you think this will eventually um, end the monetary policy that the ECB is currently running or do you think it's a, it's, it's a, a, a useless attempt to break this monopoly on, on, on what's going on? Yeah, well, um, like I, I said before, I don't really do predictions. Uh, that's okay, um, okay okay well i i still I, I try right i try i do my best <laughs> <laughs> um L let me then just ask your opinion is this the right move of germany to uh, could you support such a accusation or uh do you think it's 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 uh, digging their own hole because they need it well um, it's an interesting uh, topic. I haven't really studied it well, but um, uh, it has to do with the question of sovereignty. Um, so there, there, when the EU was formed, it wasn't called the EU, but when the European Treaty was, uh, was entered into, uh, it was not obvious that European law would be um, uh, considered superior to the national laws of the member states. Yeah. Um, uh, historically, most countries consider themselves uh, sovereign and don't recognize uh, any law higher than its own. Uh, there has been a court case by the European Court of Justice uh, many decades ago in which it uh, decided that it itself was the highest court in the e in, in the European community, and that uh, the, the the European Treaty, whose job it was to interpret 
uh, was superior to the laws of the member states and that the, the member states simply had to obey the, the European treaty, could not make laws inconsistent with it, and that it, the European Court of Justice, was the court that would decide if uh, the uh, laws of a member state uh, were consistent or inconsistent with the uh, with EU law and that it could strike down national law. I can't help to, I can't help to make the comment that it's almost as if I hear Vidya Litschka talking. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and that uh, ruling by the European Court of Justice, like I said many decades ago, has has not really been challenged un until very recently now, um, and. Um, and it is; it has its dangers and it has its uh, advantages. Um, the advantage of a system where a law can be decided to be null and void because it's inconsistent with a treaty, the advantage, of course, is that we as, as individual citizens, as subjects, have a little bit of, uh, of a recourse. When, when we are confronted with a national law or regulation that we consider as a violation of our rights, we can challenge the legality of the law, the constitutionality of the law, the consistency of the law with, with, with international treaties. We can, we can um, uh, basically sue the government and ask the court to declare the law null and void. So in a way, it is an opportunity for citizens, for subjects, to... Um, get some uh, redress of grievances, some, some remedy when the government tramples on their rights. So in that sense, you could argue that it's actually a good thing that it happened. And that, um, uh, and, 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 so, and, and undeniably, some good has come of it because there have been may, very many cases where the European Court of Justice has decided that, that laws of member states were inconsistent with the European treaty and usually, this actually was in the favor uh, of, of citizens. And um, t t one example uh, from my area of expertise is, of course, tax avoidance. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been very many cases brought, f brought uh, before the European Court of Justice by tax avoiders who were faced with national laws uh, that were trying to prevent tax avoidance, so-called anti-avoidance legislation. And the European Court of Justice has found in favor of the tax avoiders until recently in about 95% of the cases. So usually the tax man would lose. Usually uh, the, the ECJ um, uh, would argue that uh, the member states had no right to, uh, to make tax laws that were violating the freedom of establishment or the free flow of capital. So there have been very many cases where this actually worked to the advantage of, of not just tax avoiders, but any citizen who's trying to escape the high burden of, of taxation and regulation. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and this is not just uh, true for the ECJ. It's in, in a way, it is true to a large extent of, uh, of what the, the European community did in the first few decades of its existence. In the first few decades of, it, of its existence, um, what happened is that um, uh, the treaty guaranteed freedom of establishment, free flow of goods and services and capital and, and people, and uh, member states that w wanted to restrict it were stopped, were, 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 were stopped from, from, from these restrictions uh, by uh, either... Uh, Decisions of the of the of the European Commission or uh, decisions of the European Court of Justice. So the, the first few decades, the European Community existence, it was usually an organization that had more benefits than costs. Uh, it it added to our freedoms more than it cost our freedom. Yeah, you told and, us. Uh, you, you told us in the second part, Twan. So let me ask you one more thing. Something that happened this week. Uh, because, like I uh, mentioned a couple of times already in this hour, we I really believe that these times we currently live in are so incredibly unique. So many things are happening that just didn't happen before. And th we are going to the Netherlands now because I follow the Dutch news still more than 
German or French or whatever other country. Do you know that the the I was in the middle of uh, I was in the middle of of uh, I understand I understand but let me ask you this one thing. Are you aware that the department of uh, the, the 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 Dutch government sued its own tax uh, department because of uh, what happened a couple of years ago and that they uh, pr- profile people based on their nationality and that they are using uh, very old laws against their own tax men at the moment. Well, I'm aware of this scandal where the tax uh, yeah. many, many uh, uh, tax uh, officials, including uh, tax officials that were very high up in the chain of command, have committed uh, uh, in huge injustices, if not crimes, against uh, taxpayers by unjustly accusing the accusing them of fraud, even though they they knew better or should have known better. But to get back to to the point I was making, sorry, uh, sorry. I am, uh, unfortunately, uh, a little bit pessimistic, uh, and here I will make a prediction <laughs> about the future, the future of the EU, and that, unfortunately, also goes for the future of the ECJ, in that um, the trend that I've been seeing uh, of, uh, more recently is that the EU is uh, trying to harmonize the burden of regulation, harmonize the burden of taxation, and is trying to... Uh, become more powerful and centralize everything and make the rules at a central level. And uh, and where in the old days, the member states were sort of competing with each other for talent and capital and business. Um, now what we see is that the EU is developing into a cartel, uh, which is preventing uh, more and more competition amongst the member states by eradicating it, by centralizing everything. And the more that that happens, um, the, the less um, free we will become because it's, it's competition amongst uh, governments, amongst countries that actually um, uh, is, is responsible for the fact that the burden of taxation is not higher than it is, that the burden of regulation is not higher than it is. Since the 1970s, the burden of taxes has actually shrunk um, especially for businesses, for companies, because of competition amongst uh, amongst countries. And um, uh, I'm worried that this trend will go in the opposite uh, uh, direction. And as that happens, as the EU is, has, has become less and less a force for good, for more freedom, but and more and more a, a force for bad, for less freedom, by centralization and concentration of power, um, it is uh, less and less a something that we should be uh, grateful for yeah. and more and more something we should be critical of. And, and that's why I was fairly uh, positive about Brexit, because, um, well, if the, EU, if the long-term trend in the EU is that it's going to cost us more freedom, uh, then uh, it's, it's, it's better to just get out. Um, uh, like like Britain has uh, has done, and and Germany in a way is make is going in the same direction by uh, no longer accepting uh, the EU sovereignty over its own laws yeah. by claiming that German that German law is superior basically to uh, to uh, EU law. What what I think is such a shame and, is that and, uh, and, you and, know... if you'd asked me this question uh, like thirty years ago, I would have said, um, well. In, in principle, uh, sovereignty uh, 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 of, 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 of nation states is preferable to sovereignty of, of, of a European community, but so far it's actually worked to our advantage. That no longer holds. And I see a huge similarity between what's happening in the EU and what happened in the United States, because the federal government, when it was first created by the Constitution, also at the time was, was expressly um, um, formed <coughs> to increase uh, the freedom of Americans because the, the, the member states of the United States, the individual states, had, uh, had uh, created tariffs, tariff barriers, and other non-tariff barriers to trade. And the main purpose of the, of the federal government 
was to put an end to these, uh, uh, these, these trade barriers. Just like the EU, uh, when it was still called the EC, was formed to eliminate trade barriers. Yeah. So when it started, originally, it was actually a, a, a good idea. Uh, and, and for the first few decades, in the case of the federal government for the first century or so, it, uh, it, it worked fairly well in the sense that the federal government was very small, had a very low level of, of, of taxation, very few rules. When the federal government began in the United States, there were just three federal crimes, piracy, counterfeiting, and treason. That was it. So uh, uh, for a long time, it was fairly harmless or beneficial. Unfortunately, that changed. The U.S. federal government has become this cartel, has, has centralized a lot of power, has uh, introduced federal taxation, and now the federal government has caused a welfare warfare police state to come into existence. And I'm, I'm very worried that in the EU, if we're not careful, if we don't fight it, we're going to be going in that same direction. Yeah, whenever, and, whenever I hear people like Guy Verhofstadt talk about a European army, I, I you know, it, I, I get shivers over it. I think NATO is already so horrible. And then we are going to have to pay taxes for a European army. I mean, I, I got out just in time. <laughs> That's how I feel about it, when, when those subjects are being spoken about. Um, Twan, we are, we are a little bit on our time already. So many things happen. This is really just news of the last week. Germany suing the ECB. Uh, you know, the things that we spoke about today. So many things are happening. Next week, Friday, I really hope that I am going to celebrate my temporary... Uh, I want to say it wrong again. I wanted to say citizenship, but it's not citizenship. It's uh, residency. Thank you very much, Twan. Uh, but I really hope uh, we can meet each other on the 1st of June. Check the agenda. Uh, it's 24 hours, so any time of the day suits me. Um, I want to thank you a lot, Twan, for being here for the fifth time, for showing some love and appreciation to the community of Honkler Hangout. I don't really have... They have all been listening, basically, for one hour straight. We do, we do get some comments, but it's not really a question. So, I, I think that uh, I'm going to have you celebrate the weekend and i will kind of do the same and i hope to speak with you again in, in the near future because like i said a lot of unique news is happening right now not just covid not just on finance level but but so many things law cases that i have never uh, experienced never thought it would be possible uh, i really see a lot of change happening in the world and well it's it's happening at the moment right it's it's a period it's not happening all on one day but uh yeah i i you know something like uh, uh, uh the, the german i i forgot the right name for it but but germany let's just say germany going against the ecb um I'm very curious to see what will come out of that and, and, and how that is going to change history, basically, because it's history in the making. So I, I cannot predict it either, although, uh, you know, if, if only, if only I could. Thank you. Twan, I see wish you a good weekend. You too. Goodbye. Bye bye.